again this morning. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want to turn to the book of Acts chapter 9, beginning in verse 20 through about verse 22. I want to tell you, Jesus makes the difference in somebody's life. Amen? There's only one that can make a difference. There's only one that can change somebody. You cannot change nobody. I don't have the power to change nobody. But I can tell you one that surely can this morning. I can tell you, they, they, there's a saying, the leopard can't change its spots. That's true, a leopard can't change its spots. But the creator of the leopard can sure change the spots. Amen? The creator can sure turn them around. People's a society wants to reform Why Christ wants to transform. Amen? I want to show you this morning how the Lord got a hold of one. And I'm telling you, did a complete 180. When Jesus gets a hold of somebody, they're going to say, is not he this one? Is this not he this one? I want you to think about that. Saul of Taurus right here. Let's read the scriptures. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, is it not this he that destroyed them which call on this name in Jerusalem and came hither for the intent, hither for the intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ, that this is very Christ. Heart of my message is right there in verse 21, where it says, It's not, not this be that destroyed them. And that says simply, here's what I simply wanted to say, speak on. Is this not he? That's simply what he was saying. The scripture was saying there. Is this not the one who persecuted the church? Is this not the one who destroyed, who was after these ones that they call? Believers, the ones that were after the way of Christ. Now, all of a sudden, he's changed his tune. All of a sudden, he's preaching to one that he fought against so hard. It shows you how Jesus makes a difference. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we lift you up, dear God. Uh, and we pray, Lord, for your anointing, Lord, and we pray, Lord, for your spirit, dear God, in here today, Lord. Uh, Father, today we just exalt you, dear God, this morning, Lord. Uh, and we pray, Lord, for your hand to be in here, and we pray, God, for your anointing, dear Lord, to flow in here this morning, Lord. Oh, Jesus, I ask for your words. Uh, I ask for your anointing, and I ask for your spirit, uh, Lord, today we just lift you up dear God and we give you glory dear God we praise you dear Lord and we just exalt you let your spirit inhabit this house let your spirit have his way in here this morning Lord Lord and we give you the glory dear God and we give you the praise and we give you the honor in Jesus name we pray amen and amen many people have made an impact in society they have made an impact in the world one way or another whether it be for the good or whether it would be for the bad. Uh, they've had their names recorded down in history uh, for the things they've had invented, the things they have accomplished, uh, whatever the, their acts as a political leader. We think about such men in history uh, that has named, that has been recorded down in the histories of this world, uh, in the history of this nation. We think about men like Abraham Lincoln. Uh, we think about men like Ben Franklin. We think about men like George Washington and the list can go on and on. Uh, on some uh, aspects they have made an impact uh, on lives. They had made some inventions or done something that changed something around them uh, in this world. Uh, but I want you to know this morning uh, there's one that's made an impact more than any other. Uh, there's one that's still making an impact this morning. Uh, there's one that's still uh, writing the courses of history 
uh, changing lives. Uh, he's the one that's still healing this morning. Uh, he's the one that's still moving this morning. Uh, he's the one that made an impact on our life this morning. Amen? I mean, I know he made a direct impact on your life uh, the day that you were born again. Uh, his name is Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, there's no other name uh, greater than the name of Jesus Christ this morning. Uh, there's no other impact uh, that has been made just like by, been made like the impact uh, that Jesus Christ uh, made on society. Uh, I want you to know this morning that Christ uh, is still making an impact uh, right here in the book of Acts chapter 9 uh, in verse 20, 21, and 22. Uh, we see an impact that he made. Uh, we see how he got a hold uh, of one that was hell bent on destroying uh, the church. Uh, how many know Saul of Taurus uh, was bent on destroying the early church. Uh, he was well bent on bringing evil upon them. Uh, he was well bent uh, on bringing destruction upon them. Uh, he wanted to wipe it clean out of them. Uh, he wanted to just uh, obliterate the early church. Uh, he didn't want a trace of them left. Uh, he didn't want anything to do. Uh, but I want you to know earlier in Acts 9 uh, we see how that Jesus uh, got a hold of him. Uh, I want you to know this morning uh, can I tell you this? Here's a picture this morning uh, of how Christ uh, can get a hold of a persecutor uh, and turn him into an ally this morning. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Here's a picture of how Christ uh, can change somebody's life around uh, no matter how bad they are, uh, no matter how evil they are, uh, no matter how bound up they are, uh, no matter how meant they own to destruction for you. Uh, can I tell you the one they call Jesus uh, can change them around right now. Uh, I tell people before I said the people say well these people are coming against you I said all you need to do is pray for them to get a good dose of salvation and when they get a good dose of salvation they'll become maybe your greatest ally anybody know what I'm talking about because when Jesus gets a hold of them he's going to change their life when Jesus gets a hold of somebody, there's going to be a difference in their life. When Jesus gets a hold of somebody, they're going to do things a little different. When Jesus gets a hold of somebody, that persecutor is not going to be a persecutor against the things of Christ no more, but it's going to be the greatest, one of the greatest allies you will ever know. When I think about Saul of Taurus, let's see this great persecutor in the, in, here in the book of Acts Chapter 9. Now, let's see what the scripture says in Acts 9 and 1. And Saul, so, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters uh, against the disciples of the Lord, uh, went unto the high priest uh, and desired of him letters to Damascus, uh, to the synagogues, uh, that if he found any of the way, uh, whether they were men or women, that he might bring them bound uh, unto Jerusalem. Uh, what did that word slaughter right there means? Uh, I looked it up. It means he literally wanted to murder them. Uh, I know it's not recorded uh, that he he might not have personally done so but let me tell you he had consented he had given consent to have them put to death he had given them orders that if anyone be found in the faith by the way that was going the way of Christ that they were be to be executed so the Holy Spirit put God in the eyes of God even though he may not have literally took the sword and chopped their head off can I tell you this morning but in the eyes of God he was still just as guilty of murder as the ones uh, who had actually pulled the sword on him uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that he was probably there earlier when Stephen was being stoned to death uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that he had to probably give consent uh, for the stoning uh, you see Paul, Saul uh, had it in uh, for the early church uh, Saul had it in uh, for those who served the Lord. Now, Saul had it in uh, that he was hell-bent on putting everyone that he could find. Uh, he said, I'm going to wipe them out. Uh, I'm going to clean them all. I'm going to destroy all of these uh, that claim Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to destroy all of these uh, that claim this one that risen from the dead. Uh, I'm telling you, let me tell you, he was the, Saul would be the one
one who would issue the arrest orders. He would have them brought before magistrates and he would probably be the one who would literally testify against them. Let me tell you, it really wasn't no fair court, if you will. The way I see it, they couldn't be proven innocent. They were automatically guilty in this court. Almost like the court that Jesus was in. I'm telling you, it was, they, he was going to be found guilty either way. It was what I call a kangaroo court, if you will. You know the odds are stacked against you. You know what the outcome's going to be before you even get there. This is the way it was because Saul was bent on destroying them. The Pharisees were against Jesus Christ. They, the religious people, and by the way, Paul was doing all of this in the name of God. And let me just stop here and tell you uh, that one of the most evil of all evils uh, is the sin of religious evilness. Uh, by the way, Jesus didn't teach religion. He taught having a personal relationship with him. Uh, but going back into my scripture, uh, Paul may have not even uh, had, Saul may not have even pulled, laid the sword to their head. But in the eyes of God, let me tell you what Paul, as Paul he wrote in Romans 1 and 32, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Where did we see what I'm getting at? You can be guilty by association. When Paul, Saul consented to the death, it put, it put guilt all over him. Just like in our society today, if Junior wants to rob a bank and I drive the car to the bank and have him and he robs and gets into the car and I drive him off, guess what I am? I'm a bank robber as much as he was. Even though I did not go into the bank and hold the gun, but I drove the car and I went, I got, I went away with him. I took him him away. Guess who the boys are going to come looking for? They just ain't going to get you. They're going to get me also because you're associated with the fact. You see, that's what the Bible teaches. It ain't so much, uh, even, even if you, we know those that do those things uh, are worthy of death, but those who take pleasure in them uh, think there's nothing wrong with it, uh, gets a smile on it. Uh, let me tell you, the Bible tells us you can be guilty by just association with it. Uh, you can be guilty by keeping crap company with it. Amen? You see, that's where Saul was at. Uh, he was guilty by keeping uh, association. Uh, he was guilty by consenting to the death. But let me tell you, I don't care where he had been. He was getting ready to have an encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. How many know an encounter with Jesus Christ will change your life? How many know an encounter with Jesus Christ will make everything look totally different? How many know an encounter with Jesus Christ will turn a murderer into an apostle? How many know that an encounter with Jesus Christ will change one around. How many know an encounter with Jesus Christ will take someone that is bound in sin and turn them into a preacher? How many know an encounter with Jesus Christ will set one free? How many know an encounter with Jesus Christ will break the chains and shackles? How many know an encounter with Jesus Christ will give you a whole new outlook? How many know an encounter with Jesus Christ you ain't gonna walk the same? You ain't gonna talk the same? Why? Because you've got it, had an encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Here's where people miss it. Oh, my Lord. I'm ahead of myself by a mile. But I'm going to tell you, somebody tells me they ain't been changed by Jesus. They ain't truly been saved. Hello? Hello? I'm going to show you. This man had hatred. He said he, he was going after any of them uh, that way. He said, I'm going to have them placed in jail. I'm going to bring them to Jerusalem. And he was going to put them to death. What way was he talking about? He was saying, the way of the cross, the way of Christ, those followers of Jesus, if you will. And we think today that we have persecution because they laugh at us. Amen. 
We think we got persecution because something don't go our way. We think we got persecution because they cuss us and things like that. That's not, folks, that's not persecution. Hello? I'm just going to tell you right there. What the early church was under was persecution. Amen? What them saints in China today, in Saudi Arabia, those that serve the Lord, that can get caught with the Bible, that's persecution. Real persecution is when your life is on the line. Amen? Real persecution is when somebody wants to cut your head off because you follow Jesus Christ. Real persecution is when somebody wants to destroy you because of your relationship of Christ, not because they laugh at you or mock at you. Let me tell you, people laugh at me all the time. Guess what? Go ahead and laugh. I'll get the last one, by the way. They say who laughs, laugh, laughs the loudest. I'll, I promise I'll get us all up. <laughs> at the end of it when it's all said and done. But Paul was really persecuting the early church. Saul at this time, Saul of Taurus. He, I'm telling you, he had a religious hatred. He had a hatred for the true followers of Christ. Oh, he thought he was doing these things in the name of God, but God wasn't even behind it. God wasn't behind the Pharisees. Amen? How many know Paul, Saul was a religious leader? He had a spirit of religion on him. What are you saying? I'm telling you that some of the most hateful and hatred people is people that have a religious spirit on them. Amen. Some of the most meanest and ungodliest spirit is those that have religion written all over them. I want you to know once again that Christ never taught a religion. I'm going to get this through this morning. Christ never taught a religion. He didn't teach just going through the motions. Did you hear me? All the Pharisees, they knew the Scripture. How many know? They fasted. They went into the temple, but they were called a bunch of hypocrites by the master himself. He told them at one time, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. You see, they had the religious aspect of it done. They had everything religion down, but they did not have a relationship. They tried to say, we are the children of Abraham. And Jesus said, you're not Abraham's children. You, you ain't their children. You are of your father to devil. By the way, it tells me, not everybody is, everybody says we're all God's children. Wrong! We're all a part of God's creation. You don't become a child of God. You don't have a right to call him our father until you have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. You don't have a right to call him our father until you're born again. You don't have a right to call him that name until your name has been placed in the Lamb's book of life. Can I tell you, these Pharisees really, if you tell the words of Jesus, they were really under the control of Satan. Satan was disguised as religion. Satan was disguised using religion to persecute Christ himself in the early church. My Lord, I'm a preaching better than you're shouting this morning. Some of you need to get woke up this morning. Did you hear what I said? Some of you need to get woke up this morning. I'm telling you today, we need to get woke up. We're not here to be religious. We're here to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We're here because of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. People are religious. Oh, I'm talking to many religious people. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to shock you. I'll tell you what sent, has sent more people to hell than anything. Religion. Did you hear me? Religion has sent more people to hell than anything. Anybody believe that this morning? Just being religious ain't going to get you nowhere. Did you hear me? Oh, I, people say, I believe in God. And I tell them, well, even the devil believes in God too. That ain't the question. The question is, have you been born again? Have you been changed by the blood of the Lamb? Has the Holy Ghost poured the blood out upon you? Has he pricked you? Has he convicted you? Let me tell you right now, religion is the great persecutor today. Oh, I'm not going to deny we got a religion problem in this society. You look at Islam. It's a religion. 
Catholicism is a religion. Even half those that claim to be of Christ, it's nothing more than religion. But Christ never taught religion. He taught a one-on-one relationship with him. He said, I don't want you just going through the motions. I I don't want you just having that. But he said, I want to know you on a one-on-one basis. I want to have a relationship with you one-on-one. Ain't that what he taught? How many know that the Saul and the Pharisees thought they were doing the things of God? Now, let me tell you why they hate us Pentecostals so much. Can I tell you why they hate us old time Pentecostals, thus traditional Pentecostals? Because we don't cl- close the room black. We don't have fog machines. I don't need fog machines. I don't need smoke machines. I don't need flashing lights. I don't need to get you hyped up. Can I tell you, I still preach the way of this book. Amen. Now, let me tell you, they, the religion ain't going to like us. Some, of it, some people say, I don't like you Pentecostals. Because you get a little happy. Let me tell you why some of these denominations don't like us Pentecostals. Because we got something they don't have. Did you hear what I'm telling you? They got religion. But I got relationship. I remember somebody said, I told you this before. Said Somebody said, well, I don't see Jesus doing all that jumping and a screaming and a shouting. But everybody he touched surely did. Did you hear me? When he healed them, they went off a running and a leaping. Amen? Can I tell you right now? When you get a hold of Jesus. Your life ain't going to be the same when you get a hold of Jesus and he really touches you. You ain't going to care what your neighbor says. You ain't going to care what anybody else says when you get a hold of Jesus. Can I tell you this morning your life is going to be changed forever. We got religion but we don't have relationship. What's religion? I'll tell you religion, just like Saul had. Saul had, and religion truly had a hatred for Christ. There are some people that cannot stand the word, cannot stand Jesus Christ. Amen? Saul at the time, he was consumed with that most evil they are, religious evil. Amen? Let me tell you, I think back, they, the Pharisees, Let me tell you, they walked around with their nose in the air. Let me tell you something. The only difference between me and those that's bound in the world, the only difference between you and those that's bound in the world is the blood of Jesus. Amen? I was once where they was. And you sit here and tell me you've never been where they was, I'm going to tell you you're a liar right now. Amen? Amen? Some of these Pharisees thought they wasn't. Some of these Pharisees thought they were on the level of God himself. They acted like it anyway. You remember when Jesus was called, in a, caught the woman in adultery? How many know he said, he that was at sin cast the first stone? He wasn't condoning her sin. No, 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 no. He told her to go sin no more. He wasn't, he wasn't happy with that. But he said, but I guarantee you there were some Pharisees that thought they could cast a stone. There was some there, and all of a sudden, he began to write in the sand. We don't know what he wrote in the sand. He might have wrote the sins of those people. He might have wrote every one of those being that's been with that woman's name in that sand. It's possible. We don't know, but let me tell you something. They couldn't cast a stone, but there was one there that could cast a stone. There was one there who was without sin, and his name was Jesus. Amen. Amen. He made a difference. In her life, what are you getting at this morning? I'm telling you, the most evil of evils is religious evils. Think about it. We got them killing them. In the name, by the way, Islam's nothing more than the devil. Really, pure religion is nothing. Religion itself, like it, going through the motions, ain't of God. You see, God wants us to have us on a one-on-one basis. Amen. He wants to have a relationship with us. I think we'll go back to look at Cain and Abel. How evil it was. The sacrifice of Cain was rejected by the Lord. But let me tell you, the Lord accepted Abel's sacrifice. And what happened? Cain slew Abel. What are you getting at? Listen, remember, it wasn't the harlots. It wasn't the gamblers. 
It wasn't the world that gave Jesus the most trouble. Who was it? Anybody know? It was the religious crowd that gave him the most trouble. Still the same today. Oh, it's still the same. Oh, we don't believe it for our time. But it wasn't them that gave him the most trouble. It was the religious people. Once again, we see this playing out today. It was the religion. Once again, religion will send you straight to hell. Jesus taught relationship, not religion. Somebody said, what's your religion? I said, I don't have a religion. I got a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Anybody know what I'm saying? This morning, there'll be many people. You hear what I'm about to tell you? Can I have a little while this morning? My Lord, I feel like preaching. There'll be many people that will come through church doors somewhere. They'll pack up and go through their motions. They won't even think about him until next Sunday morning. Some people you won't see for another six, seven weeks. Amen. They are time, it's not like this anymore, but I remember a time at Christmas and Easter, churches would be packed out. You could expect the biggest crowd. You wouldn't see them no more. I seen a sign one time that said, let me remind you, we're open between Easter and Christmas also. Amen. 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 What they do was that time, two times a year, many people would come in there just to ease their conscience for a little bit. Amen. Wouldn't think no more about it till about Christmas. They'll ease their conscience then and won't think no more about it till around Easter time again. That's not what Jesus is talking about. That's religion. There'll be people that go through the motions today who won't even speak to Jesus during this week. Won't even think about Jesus during this week. Won't even think about the things of God. Won't even pick up their Bible. Won't even read. Won't even, maybe not even think about church during the week. What I'm telling you this morning, that's not what Jesus talked about. When I'm talking about a relationship, that means I've got to talk to him a daily, more than once a day. That means I got to hear from him in his word sometimes during the day. Amen? That means I know him on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Amen? Let me tell you, Saul didn't know who he was. Saul didn't really know God at this point. Saul didn't know who the king was. He really didn't have a relationship. Yes, he had knowledge. Yes, he was a Pharisee. But let me tell you, he was just, he was lost because he had not been born again. He had not I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. The great persecutor would now experience a change in his life. His life would forever be the change. And let me tell you, when you get a change from Jesus, when Jesus changes your life, let me remind you, people are going to notice it. Here's what it tells. We're going to go somewhere right here. They knew, is this the same one? Is this not he? How many know earlier Jesus got a hold of him? How many know Jesus got him on the Damascus road? Amen. How many know Saul, Saul, why thou persecutest me? They weren't just persecuting his church. They were literally persecuting Jesus. Jesus got a hold of him there. The point is, he, his life would never be the same. He was on his way to persecute more believers. He was on his way to get them and break to Damascus and bring them back to Jerusalem to have them to stand trial, to have them executed, if you will. He was on his way to get put some more to sentence them, get some more that he can sentence to death. But along the way, here come Jesus. Did you hear me? Along the way, here come Jesus. Along the way, here come Jesus. Along the way, Saul would have an encounter that would change his life forever. He wouldn't be bound in religion no more. He would have a relationship. He would see the one that he persecuted. He would see the one that he fought against. He would have an encounter with the one that he preached so hard against that he was so, had so much hatred for. Ain't you glad to know God had a plan for him? Amen. Ain't you glad to know God used all that to bring him to the Damascus Road to have an encounter with him? What was going on? He had an encounter with Jesus. His life would never be the same. Did you hear me? He would have a new birth, if you will. 
Here's where people miss it. Oh, I believe. I ain't where it, devils believe again. A lot of people believe in him. But a lot of, most people don't know him. Did you get that? A lot, pe- lot of people be- say they believe in him. But very few people know him on a one-on-one basis. Oh, you talk to people in society. They'll tell you they believe God. They believe in him. But let me tell you, if they don't know him, they really don't believe. Hello. Hello, the devils believe in him. That don't mean you're right. I tell people there's two types of atheists. There's dogmatic and there's practical. I personally don't believe there's a real such thing as a dogmatic atheist. A dogmatic atheist will tell you with their mouth, there is no God. But when they hit their finger, why do they cuss him? When they're on their deathbed, why do some of them cry out to God? Somebody that don't believe in God, why do they ask for prayer? Hello? Here's another one. If they don't believe in God, why are they fighting so hard against someone they say don't exist? Even Charles Darwin, I've read this somewhere, on his deathbed admitted he was wrong in the theory of evolution and said it was creation by Almighty God. I read where he got saved before he died. Now, to say that, oh, there'll be people tell you they don't that, but you get them in the least little bit of trouble, you'll find out. And by the way, hell ain't got no unbelievers in it. Did you hear what I'm telling you? The very moment they wake up their eyes on hell, they believe, but it's too late. But they are what I call practical atheists. It's full of them. It fills their churches. Oh, they'll tell you with their mouth there is a God. They'll tell you. Oh, that they believe that they know he's real. But they live their life like there is no God. Did you get that? They live their life living any old way they want. They live their life living like they ain't nothing going to stop me. I'm going to keep doing the things that I do. He nobody knows. God knows you see him, by the way. Amen. God knows what you do. You don't have to have been to people's houses. We've been to one. They had the Budweiser can or something there. I, you know how I feel about it. I call that the tool of the devil right there, the drink of the devil right there, because that's what it is. Hey, man, we don't believe in social drinking. Jesus wasn't a bartender. He don't give bondage. You can see them slip it, take their foot, and try to hide it from it because you're a preacher. Well, let me tell you, if you're ashamed up in front of me, you I ain't the one you got to worry about. He sees you doing it anyway. If you're ashamed of it in front of me, that tells you you, know, you ought to be ashamed of it in front of him. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, people don't realize what it means to be born again. Hello. I'm going to get to something right here. People think they can do whatever they want and everything's going to be all right. I'm going to tell you something right now. I know we all fall short of the glory of God. The Bible does not teach sinless perfection, but it does teach that sin shall not have dominion over us. When I'm talking about sinless perfection, we're going to mess up along the way. Amen? But it does teach that sin shall not have dominion over you. And if sin's got dominion over you, something's wrong somewhere along the way. Amen. It ain't to say you ain't going to fall short, but when I'm talking dominion over you, that it has control over you. Amen. I've heard them say, well, I'm saved. I can go smoke marijuana, drink alcohol, live in adultery, do anything I want to, and lie like I ain't going to lie, do whatever I want to, and everything's going to be all right. You got a rude awakening coming. Amen. You got a rude awakening coming. Coming quick, by the way, because the king's coming at hand. Hey, man, let me remind you, you're all one breath away from eternity, from the youngest to the oldest. Hey, man, we're all one breath away from meeting our maker. I tell people, I'm just one breath. That doctor told me the other day, I want to just lay off here in Coca Cola's a little bit. Can't you cut down to one? Nah, I ain't cutting down to one. You better be happy I cut down to three or four a day. Hey, man, you worried about what they say. I figured it's one Mountain Dew closer to glory. <laughs> Amen. 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 It's one Mountain Dew closer to glory. 
My healing comes from him anyway, by the way. Amen? Hey, my sugar's good, by the way. They want to do check it again, but uh, listen, I ain't too worried about it. I figured I'm 41. The Lord's are coming soon. <laughs> Either way, he chooses to take me. I'm all right with it. Amen? I know where I'm going. No, but people think they can do whatever they want to and think everything's going to be all right. Think they can be religious. Oh, I got to preach a while this morning. Think they can be religious. Go through the motions and think everything's all right. Religion is not what Jesus taught. What did Jesus tell Nicodemus? Nicodemus said, how can a man enter to the kingdom of God? How many know John 3 and 3? If you don't know John 3 and 3, you need to remember it. Remember what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, verily, verily. That word verily is used twice. He said, you better pay attention. When it's used once, you need to listen. But when it's used twice, he's trying to get your attention right here. I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That means there's got to be a spiritual rebirth there. It don't come through the natural process. You see what the law showed us in the Old Testament is. What you want me to tell you the purpose of the law? The purpose of the law is to show you no matter who you are, you cannot work your way up to the level of God. I don't care who you are. There ain't but one that's been perfect. His name was Jesus. But there ain't nobody else that can keep the law. Did you hear what I'm telling you? There ain't one of you in here can work your way up to the level of God. I can't work my way up to the level of God. Now, there's some people who think they're on the level of God. <laughs> Amen. There's some people who probably think they can. Amen. There's some people that think they're singing hallelujah, hallelujah all around them all the time. Amen. They're going to sing it a bit right now. <laughs> Amen. I ain't going there this morning. I'll get stoned this morning for sure. I'm just joking on it anyway. Listen. There's some people who think they can work their way up. No. Uh, the rich young ruler said, I've done all, kept all these commandments. That was a lie to begin with. He just broke one right there. He lied because he didn't keep it. Amen. 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 The Bible teaches a new birth. What does it mean? A radical change takes place. It means something different happens in your life. People's going to see something new about you. Saul, upon his counter of the Lord, wasn't what he once was. He was something new that happened to him. There was something happened, a radical change took place in the life of Saul right there. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and all things made new. Hello. The purpose of the soul's life. He was not changed. He, was ne he wasn't going to be the great persecutor of the church anymore. Amen. He was going to be one of the, gra the greatest ally <coughs> of the church, if you will. Do you know the Holy Ghost used him to pin down half of the New Testament? Over half the New Testament. Many times they were behind jail cell walls. Amen? The Holy Ghost used him. His life would never be the same. Let me tell you, if you want to see somebody's life be changed, you take them to Jesus. Amen? Let me tell you, there was a time in my life I really didn't care about church. There's a time in my life I really didn't care about the things of God. Did you hear me? Did you hear what I'm telling you? I thought going to church, I, I would tell mama, she wants to come to church. I'll go to church. I'd go to the outside. I said, I'm here in the parking lot, and I walked to the front door, but I never said nothing about going in. Or I'd walk through the front door, go down the steps, and go out the back door and say I was there. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm telling you? This was Jimmy now. He didn't want really much to do with the things of God. He wanted to be stone cold, Steve Austin or The Rock or somebody like that along the way. Amen. That was my goal when I was a little bitty boy. I actually went through the school and learned all that stuff, how to fall, take the hits and everything. But one day, I had that radical change. In fact, I would use, she had fast. 
I would purposely bring Krispy Kreme donuts in to just antagonize. Anybody can't believe, I know y'all probably can't believe I would have done something like that. I, <laughs> but guess what? What? I persecuted a little bit. I made fun of them a little bit. I would sink my Walkman in there before MP3 player, especially when the Cowboys were playing. I, I know how to put my hand and not nobody, even though the heat was on, I would keep my thick jacket on where I could run the headphones up through there and I could do like this. Listen to it. And there was a time I, when the Cowboys hit a field goal and won. I almost jumped up and said, it's good. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I'm, tell, I'm telling you. I know all the tricks. If you want to talk about the, but I knew some truth too. I knew when they start their tongues in interpretation, I said, I would always say, I need to get out of here quick. Lord, please don't be talking to me tonight. There'd be times a preacher would talk about Jesus coming out, grip the pew so hard. I said, please don't come tonight. I'm getting out of here. Oh, I'm telling you how it used to be. Telling you how I used to be. It took a time, but he got a hold of me on a certain date, on a certain time. He got a hold of me. When I went down in the altar, let me tell you, I come up a totally with a totally different outlook. I no longer come up with wanting to do the things of this world. I come up a shouting for joy. I come up just wanting to please the one that I stood against for so many years. I come up wanting to do the work of Almighty God. I come up with a different outlook. I come up with a different philosophy. I come up with a different thing. My philosophy had changed from the philosophy of this world to the truth of God's word. Amen. Amen. This is what happened to Saul. And if you've been born again, this is what happened to you. If you're not, this is what can, if you're not born again, this is what can happen to you. Amen. 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 Why well, there's still time. Did you hear what I'm telling you? What I'm telling you today is there's going to be a radical change in someone's life when they're born again. Verse 21, but all that heard him were amazed. Why were they amazed? It's a change in his life. And said, is this not the destroyed, the, the, he that destroyed them which called on his name? In Jerusalem, I'm come hither for that intent that he might bring bound unto the chief priests. Is this not he that destroyed him and come here to bring more? Here's this persecutor, and he was so set against him, this one they called Jesus, so set against his believers. Now he's preaching it. I see some of my eyes now. Amen. They didn't know what was going on. Hello? They were in amazement. Man, just yesterday, just the other day, he was putting these people to death. The other day, he was speaking against them. He come here to take some more back. Would you know what he was doing? He was bearing witness now of the faith that he once wanted to destroy Hello? Why? Because Jesus made a difference in his life. And people took notice of it. The Jews in that synagogue in Damascus were baffled. Oh, I just love it when God gets a hold of somebody truly. Amen? 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 I just love it when he really gets a hold of them. Amen? What they once was, they ain't no more. He had a change in there. Let me remind you, if you have an encounter with Jesus, there's going to be some changes in your life. I don't have a desire to do the things that I once done anymore. You want me to tell you what my desire is? Please him. The life I now live. Like Paul said, I live by the faith in the Son of God. He lives in me. My life. It's him. Amen. It ain't about Jimmy no more. Before I was saved, it was about Jimmy. Hello? It's all about him. 
I told him a long time ago, I'll go where I want to. you want me to go, and I'll walk where you want me to walk. Do what you need me to do. Little did I know where that would take me. Little did I know that he was going to call me to preach. <laughs> Little did I know, okay, I take the preaching part. I got Little, I wanted to be an evangelist because it would be a whole lot easier to be an evangelist than a pastor. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Don't say they don't have some hardships, but it's because it's hard to get some booking sometimes. It's kids staying on the road. Some churches, you know, may not be able to support you and things like that. But I thought, well, but yet I, I looked at that and I said, man, I said, I still think I'd rather do that than pastor. I said, it'd be a whole lot easier for me to do that. I could always supplement some income. But God said, no, I tried. I tried. I begged God, open the door. Let me be an evangelist. That wasn't his will. Then a pastor. All right. All right. I want to be a pastor. Okay, I'm going to be a pastor. That's what you call me to do. You got to open the door and it wasn't long. God got me into a door in Robbinsville, North Carolina. I was pretty happy there. I said, I ain't never going to leave. You're going to have to pick me up and move me. I'm in the Smoky Mountains. I'm close to Gatlinburg. I'm close to Pigeon Forge. I got a lake up the road. I got a creek up the road. I can go bear hunting, whatever I want to do. I don't need to leave. Then all of a sudden, everything seemed to shut off. Then I kind of knew that night. I won't go into detail, but there was a night where God told me, it was time to move on. I said, I'm going to send out resume after resume. I thought for sure I'd hit flawed, but I had to remember too. I said, Lord, I want to go somewhere where there's going to be lots and lots of snow. I told somebody, if it weren't for my little girl, I'd probably, I'd probably be in Alaska <laughs> or Montana or somewhere. But no. Where God wanted me, I didn't think. I said, the last resume I sent out, I didn't even think I was going to send it out. The last resume I sent out to go was Pennsylvania. I'll tell you, I had like 12, 13 states I sent it to. I sent it to Virginia, South Carolina, Georgia, North and South Georgia, Florida, Air, you know, Alabama. I thought, could have, I should have thought maybe even Texas too because... Anybody knows Texas? If I'd have got around Texas, Dallas, that would have been really. <laughs> but no, I said, well, yeah, I got one more. Where am I going to send it? Let's just send it to Pennsylvania. I didn't think I'd get a phone call back. I got some letters back. Said they didn't have nothing available at this time. But there was one evening after work. <laughs> Dr. Bell, little did I know I had a connection up here. <laughs> Dr. Bell, at the time when he was the overseer here, him and my former pastor was real good friends, and he, it's a, he used to preach for us at the church down there. He said, I got a church for you in Houston now. I said, where in the world's Houston town? <laughs> where in the world's Fulton County? <laughs> I'll find it. GPS is there, and so you know the story how we got here. But the point is, when God gives a change in your life, it's going to be about what he wants you to do. He would no longer be a persecutor. He would be an apostle. The purpose of his life had changed. His whole demeanor had done a complete 180 in his life. Marcy, you can get ready to come. Listen to what I'm telling you. Think about what the scripture says in 1 John 1, 5 through 7. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him but walk in darkness, we lie and do not know the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If you've not been changed, you've not been saved. Did you get that? I know there's a cleansing process. But I also know that somebody that's truly been born again is going to come up with some kind of change in their life. You can't help it but to encounter Jesus. to have some kind of change. Now here's what I'm telling you. Are you teaching works? No, I'm teaching grace. We're saved by grace. But let me tell you something. What works testifies. The works just testifies of the grace of God on your life. We're not saved by our works. All of our righteousness is a filthy rags. 
but the works that come, clock testify. Our lives, the actions that we do testify. We've been saved by grace. Anybody believe that this morning? Actions testify the works. We're not saved by works, no. I don't teach that at all. We're, ta- we're saved by grace. But the grace of God, the works testifies of the grace of God that's in our lives. Hello? It testifies we've changed masters. Amen? It testifies we've changed camps, if you will. Hello? It testifies we've had a change. Look what they said about the apostle Paul when he was called Saul. Is this not he that destroyed them? Is this not he that destroyed them? Notice they said, is this not he that destroyed them? This is the same one that killed them and slaughtered these ones he's taken up for today. This is the same one that slaughtered this one he's preaching about today. Slaughtered his followers. This is the same one who probably spoke against Jesus but now he's speaking for him. Wow. All in one encounter. All because he had an encounter with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I asked you, everyone standing in here, you need to ask yourself, can they see a change in you this morning? Can they see the change in you this morning? Can they see the change in you? I want you to think about that. Can they see the change in you? In you. Can the world see the Jesus in you? I want you to think about that this morning. Because can I tell you, because when Jesus comes in, he's going to make some changes. And he's going to overthrow some things this morning. I asked you, what can the world see in you? I asked you, what are they saying about you this morning? Are they saying, is this not the one that used to do all of this? Is this not the one that done all of these things? Is this not the one that done all of these things? Think about it. Maybe you need to get some things under the blood. Can I tell you, who do you reflect this morning? Who do you reflect? If I'm talking to you, there may be more in here. I got one. There may be more in here. A reflection of who it is. Paul no longer re- was the persecutor, but he could become the apostle, an ally. No longer did he preach against Jesus. He preached Jesus. Do you get that? The fruits bear witness that he had a change. The fruits had bear witness. Is there more in here? Maybe you got somebody that's fighting against you. Maybe you got someone that's be like in the place of Saul. Maybe you got lost family members that's lost and undone. What they need is an encounter with Jesus this morning. What they once was, when they have an encounter with Jesus, they ain't going to be what they once was. But they're going to be a new creation. They're going to be a new creation there. They're going to be a new creation there. They're going to be a new evidence there. Oh, da 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 da